but you recently visited the tar sands. Tell us about your trip. Well, I went up last week to go to both the center of the tar sands, which is Fort McMurray, to really see the project and make sure I understood it, uh, you know, viscerally and also to visit some of the Native Americans whose traditional way of life has been impacted by it. Up there, some of these, these nations, which it include only maybe 1,200 people, are fighting against the strip mining of this land and the resulting impact on their lifestyle in a real David and Goliath struggle. And so I really wanted to get a sense of exactly what they were standing up for, what was happening to them, and to see what was happening to the land so I could, you know, have my own independent judgment of what was going on. Did you know that there are Native Americans up in Fort McMurray? Americans, you say? Better get them a U.S. passport. That know-nothing fake expert is simply a foreign billionaire from San Francisco named Tom Steyer. He's spending $100 million renting the Democratic Party this year. His deal is simple. He pays them the money, and they oppose the Keystone XL pipeline. Of course, Obama took the deal. But as you heard, Steyer quietly slipped into Canada last week, and he refuses to release a list of activists here he met with. Why the secret meetings? Who's he trying to rent up here? So who's going to stand up to these foreign billionaires slandering our country, laughably uninformed, but pumping vast sums of cash into anti-jobs, anti-Canada campaigns? Well, maybe this guy will, Jason Kenney, the Minister from Jobs for Jobs, who joins us now from Ottawa. Minister Kenny, it gave me the willies when, when a guy comes to town who's slopping and sloshing tens, hundreds of millions of dollars around, buying up lobbyists, collecting politicians. He sneaked into Canada last weekend. He will not release the list of people he's meeting with. What can we do to stop this trade sanctions, this trade war that the American left is waging against the oil sands? Well, I've got to correct you on one point, Ezra. The, the notion that Mr. Steyer has somehow uh, directed the policy of the Democratic Party isn't true because the majority of Democratic congressmen, the majority of Democratic senators, the majority of Democrat-identified voters in the United States support the Keystone XL pipeline and key elements of that Democratic Party coalition, like the union movement, the AFL-CIO, strongly support it because they say it'll create 20,000 jobs in the United States. The truth is this. For a San Francisco billionaire who's made billions off of trading in the energy industry, by the way, in another oil pipeline company, Kinder Morgan, he doesn't care about the blue-collar jobs that will be created in the United States. But I'll tell you, most American Democratic congressmen do. I don't think we need a trade war, Ezra. What we need is for science and common sense, for evidence to guide this decision. And that's why the Obama administration had for a second time a comprehensive review of the environmental impacts of the proposed Keystone XL pipeline done by its own State Department, which determined that doing nothing, not building the pipeline, would actually increase uh, greenhouse gas emissions by between 28 and 42 percent because the supply will still come on stream and the demand will still be there. It'll just be moved by rail rather than pipe. Well, let me be clear. I am not calling for a trade war. I'm saying Tom Steyer is bringing that trade war, not through formal economic sanctions, but by waging a regulatory and propaganda war against our industry. And I accept your point. I mean, I know, for example, last year, 62 U.S. senators, including many Democrats, voted for the Keystone. Most Americans want it. Senator Landrieu, Senator Heidi Heidkamp of North Dakota, even everyone in, no in Nebraska, both Republican and de Democrat, wants this. All but the Democratic politicians, well, not all of the politicians, but all the legislatures and governors, along the pipeline route. But they it. don't make the decision. The community organizer in the White House, who is a personal friend of Tom Steyer, who went to Tom Steyer's luxury mansion in San Francisco, that community organizer president rented himself to Steyer and said no. And you know what? Uh, we have a, I, I'm frustrated by this private trade war against Canada that clearly has the approval and the moral sanction of the president. I love all those congressmen and senators you're referring to also. They simply aren't the decision maker here. What can we do to fight back, if not against Obama, against his paid hucksters coming up to Canada to put cash in the pockets of every anti-oil sands group? The Tides Foundation in San Francisco pumps more than $20 million a year into Canadian groups. And I know that, the, that they have at least 25 anti-oil sands groups 
on their payroll? When are we going to start decertifying some of these fake charities that are actually political lobby groups? Well, you, you, Mr. Starr needs to understand, uh, Ezra, that he can't come into Canada and put money into lobbying activities, including act activities designed to influence uh, legislators here, politicians, uh, without a full disclosure and without registering uh, in, in some circumstances as a, as a lobbyist. So uh, there are rules in Canada. This is not the Wild West. Uh, by the way, what is this, American Indians? And by the way, uh, did he fly up here in his private jet? And what is he talking about strip mining? Virtually all of the new bitumen developments are in situ. Does he even know what that means? There's no strip mining going on in terms of the new developments in the Athabasca oil sands region. It sound, what's bizarre is, uh, is that this uh, San Francisco billionaire is wrapping himself in the language of science when in fact everything he is saying is misinformed sentiment. He, why won't, all we're asking Ezra is for the American administration to listen to its own experts. Multiple reports done by the State Department have over and over again said that, there's, that there's, there, will be not, there will not be a net negative environmental impact as well, a result of the Stonex. But the problem about those scientists in the State Department, I've read those studies too, they actually say over 40,000 jobs direct and indirect will be created. Just the construction, States. I'm talking 20,000 is just construction. But those, those scientists and accountants and bureaucrats of the State Department lack one thing. They did not host a fundraiser in their mansion for the community in, uh, organizer in chief. Uh, what, what can we do? Listen, you're, you're, you're responding with science and facts to a propagandist who, by the way, made his billions, as you point out, in the Alberta oil sands. I'm not calling for censorship. I'm not even saying that hypocrite should be banned from Canada. I'm saying all the green groups he is packing with money should be decertified of their charitable status. And that has not happened despite eight years of Stephen Harper's prime ministership and tough talk in the last budget. Even Jean Chrétien decertified green pieces of charity. We haven't seen that yet from this conservative government. And I'm frustrated because this liar is coming up here with his money and he's killing Canadian jobs. I understand your frustration, Ezra, but you also understand that uh, we want, we're a country governed by the rule of law. Jean Chrétien didn't de, uh, eliminate Greenpeace's uh, charitable tax status, but rather the Canada Revenue Agency did. It's, a, it's an independent off, uh, agency that, that uses uh, quasi-police powers, and we don't want politicians directing who should be the subject of uh, CRA investigations. Having said that, we have given the CRA additional resources precisely to monitor uh, fraud in terms of the... Uh, of ch charitable organizations, we know that, there, that this, this happens, that organizations uh, go offside the law. So there is more investigation happening. And I understand that you brought information uh, to the attention of the CRA detailing ways in which some of these organizations uh, may be offside uh, our regulations with respect to uh, registered charities. I got only 30 seconds left. Uh, switching gears, new topic. Uh, reports out of Saskatchewan, a couple of waitresses were fired, replaced with temporary foreign workers. What do you know about the case? Are you investigating? What are you going to do about it? Yeah, we're investigating any cases we get of uh, information where there may have been, uh, where the rules may have been broken. Let's be clear, the temporary worker program is only there as a last and limited resort when Canadians are not available. If Canadians are ever laid off by an employer to make way for a temporary foreign worker, that employer is the, breaking the rules and we will be throwing the book at them, including potentially if they lied on their labor market opinions by referring this to the Border Services Agency for criminal investigation. Jason Kenny, you're one of the good guys. I'm just expressing my frustration at these foreign meddlers. I know you're standing up for Canadian jobs. You've got to fight against these San Francisco billionaires, my friend. Stand up for Canadian jobs like I know you do.